Ladies and gentlemen. Gentlemen and ladies. Ladies and gents. I'm actually going to hold the speaker up and talk to y'all. And I'm speaking to y'all on Bluetooth. Got a little something we're going to talk about. And we're just going to have my conversation this time. Because I can't just keep remaining silent. Now, Google says that I can't tell you guys that I told everybody in advance before it even happened. I have it recorded with me telling the group that they were going to do an October surprise. Google says that that false information. No, they didn't say false. They said misleading information. Why? Didn't Israel say that they were surprised? Did it not happen October 6th, October 7th? So what was misleading about saying that Israel announced that it was surprised in October? Don't take my word for it. Go back and look at the reports. And I told you they were going to keep highlighting the word surprise. Did they not do that? Apparently, they were aiming, uh, trying to hit the middle of the Mediterranean, and they hit a refugee camp. Open market. I I can't talk about it because that would be misinformation. But they haven't denied that they did it. They they haven't said it was an errant rocket. But I'm not here to talk about them. Oh, by the way, if you say anything negative about Israel, you're anti-Semitic. What happens if you say something negative about a Muslim? Now, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not pro-Muslim, not pro-Israeli, I'm not pro-anything. I don't take sides in this book, I mean, this stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not required to. There is no rule that I have to take a side. I am on the side of right and wrong. Keith Sweat, again, there's a right and a wrong way, okay? And Israel ain't choosing the right way. Okay? I think I'm going to send him a copy of Key Sweat right and wrong way. You know? <laughs> anyway, sorry, he actually says you know throughout the song. So if you've ever heard the song, you know you mean the world to me. All right? So there you go. All right. But as I said, we're going to have my conversation right now. Ladies and gentlemen, in 2013, I was given an understanding, and I I literally can only call it an understanding, that there was going to be some news report of a dirty bomb. That's all I got. And I knew that there was going to be an incident in the Middle East. So I'd already been telling my friends, when you hear about Israel and Palestine, Pay attention. If you hear something about a dirty bomb... Now, here's the thing. Hold on now. They've already been saying in the past week that other countries are wanting to bring that up, are wanting to introduce that into the playing field. They talk about North Korea. They talk about Iran. I didn't say this. They said it on the news. Talking about how they're getting weapons from North Korea. They didn't offer any proof. They just said it. Then when they offer proof, they want to show photos. And we found these hidden documents. You found hidden documents? Ladies and gentlemen, I told you guys I'm the document manipulator. I can create a document that says just about anything and put your signature on it, and it will pass a signature test even if they put it under a microscope. All the pixels will be in place. (coughs) That's what I used to do. That's what I used to do. Use and abuse them. Oh, Okay. Then I laid eyes on you. It was pain before pleasure. Sorry about that. Uh, But that is what I used to do. So it doesn't fool me when they say they're producing documents, but it will fool the general public, and that's all they're trying to fool. They're not trying to fool you. They're not trying to fool me. They're trying to fool the fools, the people who don't pay attention, the people who don't know, the people who will just accept the lie. The people who will just accept the lie, that's what the propaganda is. Look, Book of Revelations, take the time, read it, the 16th chapter, verse 14, 15, and 16. It talks about expressions like frogs, 
expressions. What type of expressions? Propaganda. This is the propaganda age, ladies and gentlemen. The propaganda is to get us to believe a certain thing according to a certain way because that's the narrative. They have given us a narrative, and we have to follow it. Why? Because they said so. See, Google didn't take my video down because it violated their policies. They said they believe that it was misinformation and it might violate their policies. Left themselves an open door. <coughs> so I appealed it because I put it on both channels. And they said, uh-uh, it violates our policies. Excuse me, I thought you said it was a belief before. You got the right to believe what you want to believe. But where did it violate your policies? And they'll never tell you. They'll never say because you said this, you said that. But let me go on. Um, matter of fact, I got to put my glasses back on. One second. It's late in the day, and I've been up working on the lawsuit uh, that I've been promising everybody I will get taken care of, and it's taken care of. It was finished 10 days ago, but I had to do the proofreading. I'm going to go to that Revelation, uh, the 16th chapter. Now, some of you, this you don't like scripture, so go on. Get on out of here. Just go ahead and close the video up because that's what I'm going to be talking about from this point forward. So you might as well just hang up the video because this ain't meant for you. If you don't like scripture, this ain't meant for you. So you might as well stop listening. This is not me trying to con you, convince you, or use reverse psychology on you. If you don't like scripture, then you don't need to be here. Okay? If you don't like scripture, you don't need to be here. This is not for you. I told you we're going to have my conversation this time. This is what I want to talk about. I don't care about what you want to talk about. Go ahead. I've already done a video telling you all about the promissory note and how to look at the promissory note. Go ahead and watch that video. Go ahead and get entertained by that junk, which ain't going to mean nothing to, for you or anybody else. My grandmama, my grandfather, my grandpappy, my grandnie, it ain't going to mean nothing to none of them. Why? Go on now. We, we got something else to talk about. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I said the 14th chapter, the 16th chapter, verse 14 through 16. And so we're going to stop right here. It says, for they are spirits of demons. Then it says they're doing tokens. And they go out to the kings of the entire world, the kings of the world, whole world of men to bring them together for the war of the great day of God the Almighty. Then he speaks about coming as a thief in the night. Ladies and gentlemen, notice what he says. There are spirits of demons doing tokens. But it doesn't explain to you what tokens means. Now this... Hold on now, let me explain to you what Biblia this is. Um, Brigginton, I think it is. Uh, Byington. This is Byington. I, I don't use Byington. I just chose to go there. Now we're going to look at the American Standard Version and see what it says at Revelation 16, 14 through 16. We're technically looking for just 14, but we're going to do 14 through 16 because some of y'all like to look at context. Uh oh, I put 14 in there. Sorry, I got to do 16. Apologize. Uh oh, too many. Too little, too late to ever try again. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is what it says. For they are spirits of demons, working signs, and they go forth to the kings of the earth, to gather, the kings of the earth, <laughs> the kings of the whole world, to gather them together into the war of the great day of God, the Almighty. Okay. Now hold on. Now again, they don't tell us what these spirits of demons are. So let's find out in verse number 13. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Yeah, the wild beast. You know, the 666 thing you all keep thinking is a literal thing? Okay, and coming out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits, and they were like frogs, coming out of their mouth. Propaganda, people. Because that's where propaganda comes from. But it's not just coming at one angle, it's coming from three different angles, but the one who's controlling it is this one, the one called the dragon. We find out in the 12th chapter who the dragon is. If you don't know who the dragon is, because China is the kingdom of the dragon. Let's prove it to you. I didn't say this, China says this. Verse number 9, and the great dragon was cast down, the old serpent, the one in Revelation, I mean in uh, Genesis, he... 
that is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world, keeps mentioning the whole world. He was cast down to the earth and his angels, now referred to as demons, were cast down with him. So he's the dragon. So he's the one in control. He's the one orchestrating all of this propaganda. That's why you see they don't mind killing innocent people. Now, I said innocent. People said, they ain't innocent. Really? Those children are not innocent. No, 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 no. Shut up. The children are not innocent. So the children are guilty of something. Okay, what are, what are they guilty of? And who was judge, executioner, conviction, jail time? Where, where, where did all that happen at? Where did due process at? They do have due process in those countries, Israel. They do have due process. And I saw coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet, three unclean spirits. Well, they don't have actual spirits coming out of their mouth, but again, they're speaking out of their mouth. And it says they're unclean, so it means that the information that's coming out is not beneficial. Deliberately misleading. That's why it's coming from the father of the lie. Y'all... I'm going to help you just a little bit. Let's go to Matthew. No, we can go to John. Y'all remember John? Go to John, and we're going to go. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to take a trip in eight, because eight, eight's our friend. Because we can, we can let y'all know there is this 32 thing. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth is Set you free. Okay, the truth about what? The truth about God's word. John seventeen seventeen. Just remember, John seventeen seventeen says God's word is truth. This is the truth He's talking about. Now we can go to foe to foe, foe foe. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father. It is your will to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and he standeth not in the truth. Because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a lie and the father of the lie. Ladies and gentlemen, that's kind of confusing to people. So let's see if we can go to, we can go to this, we're going to do this one. And we're going to go to John. And then I'm going to move on and I'm going to tell you what I, what I know. All right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Go back to the 8th chapter, and now let's see if we can look at verse 32 again. And let's see if we have a little bit of clarity of the what they're being said, and you will know the truth. What truth? We're going to click on this to find out what he's talking about. Because it told you it's John 17, 17, so we're going to extract it and see what it says. John 17, 17 says, sanctify them or cleanse them or consecrate them by means of the truth. Your word is truth. Then he says to Pilate, well then, well this is Pilate saying, well then, are you a king? And Jesus answered, you yourself are saying that I am a king. For this I have been born. Wait, why was Jesus, well, he came to save our lives. No, that's not why he came here. These are his words. For this I have been born. Why? To be a king. And... For this I have come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is on the side of the truth listens to my voice. So he said he was born to be king. Born to be love. Okay. He was born to be a king. For this I have been born. Now I know many of you guys, well, no, it's not just that, it's that, the other, and the other. No, he didn't say that, did he? He says his true followers listen to his voice. So stop making up what he meant. He didn't say what I mean is this. No, he said because he's explaining. He told Pilate, you yourself said it, Buster. For this I have been born. For what? Being a king. Now, if you don't believe that's what he was born for, let me show it to you so that you will stop arguing with me. Because, yes, 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 you're sitting in the back arguing. So to prove to y'all that he was born to be a king, we're going to go back to the 12th chapter. Okay? 
that's the first place we're going to go. Now, we, we should go back to the ninth chapter and all of that, but we're going to go to the 12th chapter. And we're going to find out about these signs, because there are signs. What type of signs? It says, and she gave birth to a son, a male. Now, this is not Jesus. This is the kingdom. Because the woman giving birth is not Eve, like some people have thought for centuries. It says, then a great sign was seen in heaven, a woman arrayed with the sun, so she is not physical. And the moon was beneath her feet, and on her head was a crown of twelve stars. And she was pregnant, and she cried out in her pain and in her agony to give birth. Now, we're not going to look at this other sign, because that's Satan. So we're going to skip to the next one, number five. And she gave birth to a son, a male, God's kingdom, who will shepherd all the nations with an iron rod. And her child was snatched away to God and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness where she will be placed as a place prepared for her by God and where they will feed her for 1,260 days. The only thing we're concerned about here is pay attention. There is a kingdom. So let's find out about the kingdom just for a second. Y'all don't mind? Because I, I mind, but I'm, I'm going to do it anyway. The 10th chapter is where we need to go. So we're going to go to the 10th chapter of Revelation. And we're going to look at roughly verse number 7 because number 7 is our, our friend. It says, but in the days... When the seventh angel is about to blow his trumpet, you all here keep hearing about the angels blowing the trumpet. Well, this is the one they're talking about, the seventh one. This is the last trumpet. You guys keep hearing about the last trumpet. Well, it's the seventh trumpet that everybody is referring to when they say the last trumpet sound. So when he is about to blow his trumpet, it says, then it is at that time that... God declared as good news to his own slaves, the prophets, is indeed brought to a finish. So the sacred secret of God will be revealed. It will no longer be a secret. And it will be, pay attention, brought to a finish. We are now in that last trumpet blast, and the declaring of this good news is what's happening now in our day. That's what Jehovah's Witnesses are doing. If you didn't know why they were out there, now you know. They're declaring the good news about God's sacred secret. What is God's sacred secret? Well, let's find out. It says when the seventh angel blows his trumpet, it's going to be the revealing of the sacred secret. So let's find out what is the sacred secret. Pay attention, number 15. Remember, we were talking about the seventh angel. The seventh angel blew. See, the first one says in verse number 10, number 7, look what it says he's going to do. It says, but in the days when the seventh angel is about to blow his trumpet. Uh-uh, we done passed that because number 11, verse 15 says, And the seventh angel blew, not in the process of, but blew his trumpet. And there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Christ. And he will rule as king forever and ever. Not Jesus, but the Lord, God, Jehovah. Why? Because remember, at the end, when everything is brought into submission, Jesus hands over everything back to the Father. Y'all know this stuff. Y'all don't need me to tell y'all about Colossians and the other books of the Bible that talk about this. But let's go to Colossians, the first chapter, and let's see if this is the case. Then I can tell you the story I want to do this video about. All right. So the first thing y'all need to do, make sure we talk about Jesus. He rescued us from the authority of the darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. And by means of whom we have our release by ransom. That's right. Jesus ransomed us, but that was not the reason of him coming to earth. The reason of him coming to earth was to be king of that kingdom that you just heard, because that is the sacred secret of God. It's his kingdom and what his kingdom is going to do for mankind. Shh and for the entire realm of existence. Anyway, the forgiveness of our sins. He is the image of the invisible God. Just like we are in the image of God, Jesus is in the image of God. He is not God. He is in the image of God. You don't believe me? Go back and read. The firstborn of all creation, which means he was born. That means he had a beginning. He was a creation. The very first creation of God. Who else could it be? Think about it. The very first thing God ever created, who else could it have been but Jesus? 
Because you can't, those of you who believe in the Trinity, you can't come up with another first thing that God created. Come on now. Because it was that significant, the very first one, of course it would be called his only begotten. But y'all believe that he created something else first. Well, how come you don't have any documentation of what that is? There's nothing in the scriptures of him creating something else before Jesus. But Jesus is God. Well, if he is, then how come it says here he was created? It says, because by means of him, all things were created in heaven and on earth. Did not Jesus says, all things have been created by me, through me, for me? Did not he say that he was the beginning? This says he's the beginning of the creation of God. Did he not say, I have been here from the beginning, before Abraham was, I have been? Did he not say those things? So why can't you put the pieces of the puzzle together? Now pay attention. The things visible and the things invisible, whether they are thrones, lordships, remember he is lord of lords, or government or authorities. All other things have been created through him and for him. Also, he is before all other things. Also, he is before all other things. Also, he is before all other things. And by means of him, all other things were made to exist. But you guys have been reading this. You guys have been reading this over and over and over again, and you've been ignoring it. Okay. The problem is we're at the time where his patience is up. He and his father's patience is up. So look, let me let me see if I can explain to you because I said this what the reason I was doing this video. In 2013, I was just given an understanding that there was going to be a conflict in Israel Palestine that it was going to involve Israel Palestine, and that there was going to be a mention of a dirty bomb, and at that point, that was going to be the point of no return. In other words, it will be too late for people to say, "Oh God, I'm willing to listen." I want to do this, and I want to do that. It'll be too late to have Keith Sweat show up again talking about I want it. Okay? It, it, it won't work, ladies and gentlemen. So all you got to do is look before anybody else talks about it. They, they've mentioned the possibilities of it, but, again, I've been telling people about this since 2013, 10 years ago, because it was the understanding. Before they even put it on the news, that's why I did the video <laughs> talking about the so-called October event that Israel said was a surprise, equating to an October surprise. And a false flag, because they said they didn't have prior knowledge, and Egypt said they had prior knowledge. Egypt said, we warned y'all before it happened. Ladies and gentlemen, they took the video down almost... Well, they, they waited nine days after it was up. It's not anything other than history. But you're saying, what can you do? You guys know that they're getting ready to do jab jabs all over the place. Uh, a prime minister, well, no, she's not a prime minister. She's an elected official. She just did a video. She put it out before the election. Whatever country is, oh, New Zealand is, I think, the, the country. She put the video out before the election. Uh, this is the eve of the election. So she put the video out, not even knowing whether or not she's going to be elected into office. But she's talking about the jab, 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 and the amount of individuals who are no longer alive as a result of the jab, jab, saying how they all got the jab, jab on the same jab, jab day. And on the same jab, jab day, they subsequently all stopped thinking about the jab-jab all at the same time, roughly around the same period, because they can't think no more, because they ain't got no more thinking. As the Bible says, the memory of them has been forgotten. So they ain't thinking no more. And so that's what she was revealing, and she was showing the fact that they have proof, the studies have proven that a lot of people are doing that, no longer thinking about jab-jabs and no longer thinking about anything and no longer breathing, you know, and so... Ladies and gentlemen, I told you before, what I saw during that same period was the dark winter that the more, I mean, um, Biden talked about. Biden said it's going to be a dark winter. I didn't say this. He said it. He said it during the inauguration. He said it during the election. 
He said it during the debate. Then he said it during his speech before Congress, the so-called statement to the nation, or whatever they call that junk. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, dark winter. We haven't had a dark winter yet. So that means it's coming. The amount of unrest on this planet right now, the amount of anger, the amount of people being upset. You guys don't even realize, again, not only does the propaganda lead to that, but also the junk in the atmosphere is causing people to be more agitated. I've even noticed it with myself. Literally, I have noticed it with myself, getting upset over the most simple and most basic junk. So we're all affected. Can't get away from it. 5G? Now, 5G has an effect on people, whether they want to believe it or not, because it was designed that way. I didn't do this. I didn't say it. Go ahead and look at to whether or not 5G can affect an individual's psyche and other things internally. There are enough studies being done right now, so go do your own research. Don't take my word for it, because right now I'm only speaking in generalities. But what I can tell you is the time when you hear about a dirty bomb, it'll be too late to choose a side. Because at that point, it won't matter. Something significant will happen shortly after that, where the UN will get involved. Because they'll have no choice. Because Israel is going to want to, well, we don't know if it's going to be Israel with the dirty bomb or them with the dirty bomb. I don't know, because I just it was just the dirty bomb. That was the report. Don't know what type of dirty bomb. Just know that the report's going to be about a dirty bomb. That's what you're listening for. So why wait until then? Why not make the choice now? It's not going to kill you to serve Jehovah because he doesn't ask for anything from you. He just asks that you learn about him. You can't do it on your own because if you can learn about him on your own, then there would be no reason for Jesus to have had disciples who he sent out to go and talk to people. You don't believe me? Ladies and gentlemen, I had somebody who told me he studies on his own. And I told him, are you crazy? You can't study this stuff on your own. You don't have the authority to study it on your own. We go to Acts. Now, what most people don't know, it's called Acts of the Apostles. Now, why is it called Acts of the Apostles? Because it's talking about what they did, y'all. Ain't talking about what they gonna do. Yeah, we can leave it at large. I don't need to bring it up any larger. It says, so when they had assembled, they asked him, Lord, are you restoring the kingdom of Israel? Now, y'all think it's physical Israel. It ain't about no physical Israel. That's not the kingdom he's going to be restoring. Pay attention. At this time, and he said to them, it does not belong to you to know the times and the seasons that the Father has placed in his own jurisdiction. You remember, his jurisdiction is heaven. He ain't establishing no Israel on nobody's earth. He didn't establish the first one on earth. They abandoned him. They killed his son. He says, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be witnesses of me in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and to the most distant parts of the earth. They had to go and witness about him to the most distant parts of the earth. Why? Because he gave them a command. Where is the command? The last two verses of Matthew. Okay? Matthew 28. So we can go to Matthew. Hey, come on now. Get on out of there. Vente Ocho. Okay, we're going to the last two verses. Well, last three verses. Uh, verse 18, 19, and 20. All right, let's take that trip. Jesus approached and spoke to them, saying, This is after he had been raised from the dead. All authority has been given me. In heaven and on earth. Now, if he was God, hold on now. If he was God, it, it, hold on now. If he was part of a trinity, why would he need anything to be given to him? He would already have it. He would already have it. Why would he need somebody to give him authority if he was God? Hold on. We ain't going to talk about that. We're going to move on. Go, therefore, and make disciples of people of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to, teaching, te teaching them, te teaching them, no, letting them learn on their own, 
to observe all. No, teaching them. So that's called studying with someone because that's how people learn is through teaching and study. Teaching them to absorb all the things that I commanded you. And look, I am with you all the days into the conclusion of the system of things. We are now in that conclusion. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. I didn't spoke on it, so I got to speak on it, y'all. We got to get something straight here. Go to John 17, because I showed this to somebody the other day. He said he didn't know about this. It kind of caught him off guard because I had mentioned it, and he, where is that at? We're going to read all five verses. John 17. Jesus spoke these things, and raising his eyes to heaven, he said, Father. Now, why would he raise his eyes to heaven and say, Father, if he was God? Uh Uh-uh, because what you're going to try to explain ain't going to be with Scripture. It's going to be out of your mouth. You cannot explain the Bible. The Bible has to explain itself. That's why I'm not telling you what it says. I'm showing you what it says. Well, with the expression like frogs, you're saying that's propaganda. Yes, because it comes out of the mouth. And because it comes from Satan, he's the father of the lie. Propaganda is lies. Repeated over and over and over by the authorities. I can't do propaganda because I don't have any authority, but the government has the authority. It can do propaganda. Okay? I didn't know if you guys were going to get that part, but I'm so glad y'all did. All right, so now let's go ahead and read again. He said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your self. I'm sorry, that didn't say self. There's no F there. Glorify your self. No, that doesn't say self. I can take glorify and that word and put it together and get up with self, but there won't be an E. Huh, how do I put self, make this into self? I can't. I have to read it for what it says. Hold on, I'm going to read it. Oh, I can go with this and that word right there, and I can get self right there. But then I have too many letters left over. (sighs) Okay, let's try it again. Glorify your son so that your Son may glorify you, just as you have given him authority over all flesh. You see, he received it from some place, so that he may give everlasting life to all those whom you have given him. This is the meaning of everlasting life. Pay attention. He's about to tell us, give us the definition of everlasting life. This means everlasting life. They're coming to know you, the only true God, and, and conjunction, junction, the one whom you sent, Jesus Christ. I have glorified you on the earth, having finished the work you have given me to do. Now pay attention. So now, Father, glorify me at your side with the glory I had alongside you before the world was. So when it says, and the word was with God, this is what it's referring to. Now, what y'all don't know, uh, give me one second, because I don't know exactly where the scripture is, so I, I got to find it. I, W, I, L, L, N, uh-oh, stop that, hitting the wrong button, N, O, T, S H A R E my G L O R Y. I gotta find this particular scripture. It's a biblical scripture. It's the one where God. Yeah, let's do this. The same study Bible and it's Philippians. No, it's not Philippians. No, I want the glory one. So. And I'm going to have to use the other Bible because I'm using the words of this one, not the words of that one. So, no, I'm using the words of the other one. Hold on. I'm using the words of this one. Still says Philippians, but this ain't it. I know it's probably Isaiah, but give me a second. I got to pause, y'all. Hey, I know some of you guys were jumping up and down and shouting, no, it's not there, it's there. So, we, I got to do this. I got to go all the way back. No, I don't want to do Philippians. I got to go all the way back. I got to go back to all publications. And I got to go here. And I got to go, let's do Rotherham. Oh, I don't think, yeah, Rotherham does have Isaiah. 
and go to Isaiah, ladies and gentlemen, the prophet Isaiah. And as we click on Isaiah, we can go to verse uh, chapter 42, 42. And after we get to 42, we can go to 48. I am Yahweh, which is the Hebrew pronunciation for his name. That is my name. And my glory to another will I not give, nor my praise to images, idols. He doesn't share his glory with anyone. That's why Jesus could say, glorify me with the glory I had alongside you before the world began. Okay? Yahweh is the Hebrew pronunciation, because there is no Jah sound in Hebrew. That's why it's hallelujah, Y-E-H. And in English, it's hallelujah, J-A-H. All right. So just make sure y'all get that. Hold on now, because y'all y'all think I was kidding. Let's go to Isaiah 42, verse 8. Quarentido, and then Ocho. I am Jehovah, that is my name. I give my glory to no one else, nor my praise to graven images. He doesn't allow no idol to share his praise. He says he gives his glory to no one else, not even to Jesus. That's why Jesus could say, glorify me with the glory I had alongside you before the world was. Not with your glory, but with the glory I had, because Jesus has his own glory. That's why Paul can speak of um, the planetary uh, items having their own glory. I believe that's why it took me to Philippians. Okay? Uh, S-T-A-R has its O-W-N-G-L-O. R Y. He Paul, speaking of the stars having their own glory, let's see. Oh, it's Corinthians. Alright. This yeah, Corinthians the fifteenth chapter. This is the fifteenth chapter. Fifteenth chapter. Corinthians the fifteenth chapter. Sorry about that, y'all. I know where that was. It says not all flesh is the same flesh. But there is one of mankind and there is another of cattle, uh flesh of cattle, and there's another flesh of burden, and there's another flesh of fish. And there are heavenly bodies and earthly bodies, but the glory of the heavenly bodies of one, is of one sort, and that of the earthly bodies are of different sorts. The glory of the sun is of one sort, and the glory of the moon is another, and the glory of the stars is another. In fact, one star differs from another star in glory. That's why he won't share his glory with anyone, because everyone has their own quote-unquote glory. Nobody pays attention to that. Nobody gets it because they don't understand the word glory. It's not a TV series. It's not a movie. Okay, Cuba Gooding Jr. is not playing in this episode. So, ladies and gentlemen, I say again, I cannot begin to tell you how the situation in Israel is disturbing me. How the situation in Gaza is disturbing me. How the situation in the Gaza Strip is disturbing me. I cannot begin to tell you how what's going on over in Palestine is disturbing me. I wasn't too concerned about Ukraine because, yeah, they were hitting apartment buildings here and there, but they weren't destroying whole apartment buildings. You did not see buildings collapsing all the way to the ground. There's only been one nation that has done that previous, prior to Israel, and that was, come on, come on, think about it, the United States. The United States is the only nation that deliberately destroyed buildings. They even told it to you. They said they were destroying mountains where the Taliban was hiding. No, they were destroying buildings. They were destroying neighborhoods. They did it in Iraq, and they did it with the Taliban. Pay attention. They called them bunker blasters. Isn't that what Israel's using now? Taking buildings to the ground? No, 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 no. Hold on. They said... The Hamas has the same technology. Ladies and gentlemen, if Hamas had the same technology, then why is it when their rockets land, you see little small holes and little small craters? I was watching an NBC broadcast where they said a rocket came down and literally destroyed the back end of a car, and you could see the indentation the rocket left. Let me ask you a question. Why did it leave that little small indentation? Why didn't it just leave a big, huge crater? 
then all these other nations independently are finding that it was a Hamasian rocket. Well, if it was, okay, where's your proof? You're going off of a video that was sent by Israel? That makes a lot of sense. Why don't you go off the facts? Stop, stop under, misunderstanding that videos can be manipulated. They have the technology for it. They have deep fakes doesn't just work with just voices and photos. Deep fake works with videos. Anybody can produce a video of something blowing up. It's called Hollywood, and they were on strike. So just imagine how they needed the money. Now I'm not saying that's what happened. I'm saying what they gave us wasn't proof. It was take our word for it. And of course, I would like to take their word for it. But why should I? So, I'll say it again. I am very, 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 very disturbed by what's going on. I am very disturbed by seeing the dead bodies. Now I have to just look past all the videos that shows that and go to the next one because it's too much. Ladies and gentlemen, this has never happened before in our history. Now I said the United States did it. No, this has never happened before. Let me tell you something that was different about when the United States did it. When the United States did this, all the other countries did not have smartphones. You see, they could block out the Internet, but... They can't block it out anymore because now people have satellites. They have portable units where they can get a signal. And these individuals are taking photos and pictures of what's going on. Go ahead and take a look at the videos now, people. They're now You see everybody with their phone out. Everybody's taking pictures now because they understand that they have to get the information out. Now, that tells you that they are not dumb. Everybody wants to think of certain groups of people, Somalians, you want to think of them as being dumb because our world has told us that they're rebels and they're this and they're that. And, they, and I, I don't like Eritrea. Eritrea is a very, they, their leader is very dumb and their laws are very dumb. They hate Jehovah's Witnesses, so I'm not a big fan of Eritrea. But they're not stupid people. And I mean that both ways. They are not stupid people and they are not stupid people. Okay, but here in the West, in the United States, we are taught that if anybody ain't in the West, if they ain't from North America, they got to be dumb. And if they're south of the United States, they got to be even dumber. Yeah, Canada, we give Canada a little bit of credit. Who in the, ladies and gentlemen, who made us anything? It didn't work like that, but we believe that we have the right to have it work like that. That's not how this works. In a nutshell, I'm going to take two more minutes and let you guys know that I am concerned. In 2017, I did a video, and I told them, everybody, that that wasn't the pandemic, that what's coming will be the pandemic that I saw. What I saw was a whole lot worse than what we went through. I saw bodies being piled up on the street. I saw people being afraid to come out of their homes. And the ones who did come out of their homes needed to have passes and other things to prove that they were not infected. That's what I saw. I don't know when, ladies and gentlemen. I just know that this one will be much different than the other one. But I also know that just before that happened, we we're going to hear reports of a dirty bomb. Doesn't, don't know if that's going to happen next week. Don't know if it's going to happen next month. I don't even know if this is the event that's going to lead to that. What I am suggesting is it seems like this is most definitely the event that's going to lead to that because they're pissing off a lot of people throughout the world. There are riots everywhere. Uh, embassies are being burnt up every single day. I mean, we got people doing sit-ins at the Capitol. The last time they did a sit-in at the Capitol, they got people arrested for insurrection and rebellion, but they ain't arresting nobody for insurrection and rebellion this time. What's the difference? Because it wasn't insurrection and rebellion the first time. Oh, by the way, let me say something about that insurrection and rebellion the first time. Did you notice how Donald Trump did not speak up for a single person? He has not come to the aid of a single person who was there to support him. They supported him. He hasn't supported a single. Don't, don't, 
I don't care what you have to say about it. You see me, I will stand up for each one of you. If you were right there doing something that I, please, I'm going to go one more minute. He has not stood up for a single person, has not spoken up for them, has not provided a defense for them, has not bailed anybody out of jail. He has not put, this man has taken in all of this money with his so-called PAC, and he is not helping any of these people who were there trying to help him. That's called selfishness, people, because he doesn't care about those people. And they realize that. They realize that. They're going to talk about, well, he can't help because of his presidency. No, he knows how to get monies and help people and lawyers and everything without it coming back to him. He's Donald so-called wannabe Trump. Y'all, don't believe the hype, please. You guys are going to have to start thinking for yourself. You're going to have to, because if you don't start thinking for yourself, this this ain't going to end well. Hey, got to go. Y'all take care of yourselves. Goodbye.